Hi everybody, welcome to our Estuary Biodiversity Lab. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Lake Worth Lagoon, which is an amazing resource here in Palm Beach County. And it provides critical habitat to a number of unique species across the area. We'll be conducting a study of the biodiversity found at two sites within the lagoon. And we're going to look at biodiversity specifically because it's kind of important. We've covered it before and there's two components of it. Species richness is the number of species found at a site. And species evenness would be how many of each of those species we have. For example, maybe you have three or four different species. Maybe you have a hermit crab, maybe you have a pinfish, maybe you have a puffer fish, maybe you have horseshoe crabs. That would be four species. But maybe I have five hermit crabs and 203 pinfish. That, e that difference between how many individual species and how many of each of them combine to create the biodiversity. And we've created a biodiversity indice to kind of balance those numbers. Oftentimes we use what we call the Simpsons Index. So, shall we go out into the field? We should. Let's go. Hey everybody, we're at the Lake Worth Lagoon. Here at Snook Island, which is a great natural area that is a restoration site. And we're gonna talk all about that. One of the benefits of creating such amazing natural areas is recreation. Ms. Nocera and I love to paddle around Snook Islands, which provides a great opportunity to connect with nature and check out wildlife. Snook Island provides a 1.2 mile long living shoreline next to the Lake Worth Golf Course, complete with a series of mangrove islands. Back in 1925, the golf course had been created by dredging sand from the lagoon. This left a deep hole you can see in this bathymetry graphic. The deep, mucky water provided little habitat. In 1998, the Lake Worth Lagoon Management Plan identified this area as a great site for restoration. Construction began in 2003 to create the Snook Islands we see today. Back in 2005, you can see some of the Forest Hill Environmental Academy students helping to plant red mangroves on the newly created islands. Over a decade later, all of that hard work has really paid off, creating such a unique and diverse ecosystem. So here we actually have two species of mangroves. We have red mangroves here, which are really well known for their crop roots that come out into the water to help stabilize. And of course, uh, anytime you see um, these, these are called nomatophores or dead mum's fingers, you know a black mangrove is around and that's what we have right over here. And of course, if you keep your eyes out, you can see lots of wildlife. Here's a raccoon looking for food along the shore. And if you're really quiet and still, you just might see a community of fiddler crabs come out of their holes and scurry across the mud flats. Now that you've had the chance to learn a little bit about Snook Islands, we're going to head out and collect some biodiversity and water quality data. But first, let's meet the team that's gonna be helping us along the way. Hello, my name is Aaron Barnes. I'm here with part of the Surfrider Foundation, help uh, Forest Hill High School. And we've worked real close to Blue Water Task Force, which we mostly deals with testing the water for bad bacteria and things like that, and then warning the public if it's uh, high and might make you sick. So Surfrider Foundation does a lot of things, as well as you know, cleaning up the beach, that kind of thing. But we're here, here glad to help Forest Hill High School. All right, my name is Ronaldo Diaz. I'm your Lake Worth Waterkeeper, and we're an environmental nonprofit. We monitor the Lake Worth Lagoon, do all kinds of science research, water quality monitoring, and I do a lot of legal work uh, designed to protect the lagoon against things like polluters and developers. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jessica Teets, and I graduated from the Environmental Science Academy in 2005, and I'm now part of the board and um, I currently work at the South Florida Water Management District in the Water Quality Monitoring section. Let's begin with our study site. We will be sampling two locations at Snook Islands. Site 1A will be along the main shoreline across from the golf course clubhouse. This is a more sheltered site with a mangrove island located just offshore. Site 1B will be located on the northeast side of the adjacent mangrove island. This location is more exposed to waves and wind from the wider lagoon. Before we get started in biodiversity, it's a good idea to collect environmental data. First up is using 
the refractometer to collect salinity data. Then Ms. Nocera and I used the pH and oxygen meters to grab that data. Finally, we checked out water clarity using a turbidity tube. This device works by filling the column up with water and then slowly releasing that water until you can make out the contrast of the black and white pattern at the bottom. Then you read the measurement on the side of the tube to get the data. And of course, we'll document all of these parameters in our data sheet. And here they are for you to record on your lab forms. Hey everyone, we're back in the lab again just to go over a few things for you to go over how we actually collect the data when we're out in the field. But something you haven't been familiar with is a SANE net, and this is an example of a SANE net. If you look over there at the drawing, we have floats these the top. at the top and weights at the bottom. This one happens to be about 20 feet long, and we drag these with the poles on either side like a purse through the water, and it really, in the shallow water, and it helps us collect a lot of the organisms that we're going to count today. Of course, when we go out in the field, we have to make sure that we have our permits in hand just to make sure that we're following proper regulations. And this is actually from F Florida Fish and Wildlife, and we actually do have to call in prior to doing any work out there. Here's the same in action as Ms. Nocera and Ronaldo are pulling it along in Site 1A. Once it's time to pull the net up, everyone gets involved to make sure our catch doesn't escape before we count it. As the count gets called out and recorded, all the fish are released to minimize harm. As you notice, we use little scoop buckets to collect the fish when we're counting. This is really important because that way we don't rub the slime coat off the fish, which helps protect them in the wild. As you notice, I'm labeling some of the different species as we find them. There'll be an extra credit opportunity for you guys to select a few of them to do some investigations on. Now it's time to cross the water over to the island. It's only about waist deep during low tide, so it's not too bad and just a little mucky. Once on the island, we crossed over to the east side to check out Site 1B. As you can notice, this is an area that's a little bit more exposed and you can see the different waves coming in off of that open water. It's time to grab the seine net and get back out there. Here's Ronaldo and Aaron pulling this time. And we definitely found some critters. Here's a really big checkered puffer and some very, very small fish that we had to really pay attention to to see what they were. A whole school of them. Here you can see them underwater. These are actually little juvenile mohera. There were so many of them, we had to count them as we poured them out of the buckets. Another cool find is a larval fish that we believe might be a tarpet. That's all the seining here at Snook Island. So we're going to clean up the nets. And of course, you can access the data we've collected in your assignment portal. Now it's time to head to our second restoration site, Munion Island, one of my favorite places in the lagoon. If you look at a satellite image of Palm Beach County, you'll notice a small section of coastal island that's actually not developed. That's MacArthur Beach State Park, and it is surrounded by concrete roads and high-rises. On the west side of the park is Munion Island, one of the best examples of a pristine estuary in Palm Beach County. You can only get there by boat or kayak. The island was originally called Nukta Shu by the Seminoles, meaning Pelican Island. The island was bought by Dr. James Munyon in 1901, and he completed construction of the Hygieia Hotel by 1903. Dr. Munyon catered to the wealthy northerners with his famed Munyon's Papa Elixir, a blend of sulfur water and fermented papaya juice. The hotel itself burned to the ground in 1917. So this is part of uh, the old well here <laughs> at Munion Island. There's not a whole lot left uh, of the old structures, but this is one little piece that you can find. The island was eventually acquired by John D. MacArthur in 1955 and by the state of Florida in 1981. Between 1992 and 1997, a massive restoration project was initiated on the island, completely removing all the invasive exotics and totaling about 43 acres of restored habitat in the Lake Worth Lagoon. Today, the island's set up with a little boat dock, a trail, and even some barbecue pits for day visitors. 
but the coolest part is exploring the internal channels of the island and of course a little bit underwater. This hermit crab is hanging out in the shallow water among the shoal grass, picking through sediments for algae and detritus to eat. Just a little farther along, I found a little burrfish fish laying low as the tide's going out. Burrfish, fish, along with other peppers, are predators of benthic invertebrates, so they go after little crabs and shrimps and mussels. This little fish decided I was getting a little too close. Time to go a little deeper into the mangrove-lined inner channels of the island. We were paddling at low tide, so you definitely can see a lot of the exposed mangrove roots and a lot of the mucky bottom. So I'm at the back of like a little finger canal uh, in the island, and this is where you find lots of stagnation. And this, uh, this is basically detritus. It's dead organic matter. There's lots of leaf litter in here. Um, basically, it's decomposition going on with bacteria and everything else. Um, and this is what feeds the food chain here, really. Uh, it's a detrital system. All these leaves, uh, seagrass blades, uh, pretty much everything that ends up on the bottom ends up getting decomposed. And then eventually, uh, it re-releases as nutrients into the environment, supporting this amazing system. And not too far away, a little blue heron was making use of the low tide in the channels to stalk some little juvenile fish. While back in the channels, we took the opportunity to pull out the old refractometer and check the salinity, which was about 28 parts per thousand. The dissolved oxygen was around 4.7 milligrams per liter, and the pH was around 7.5-7.6. Because it's low tide and you're in these confined channels with lots of dead organic matter being decomposed, you're generally going to have a little bit of a lower dissolved oxygen and a lower pH than you might have outside the island in the open water. And if you take a close look at some of the exposed sandbars, you'll see these little snails all over the place moving around. These are battle area snails, and they're very common in the low tide area, and you can find them searching through the sand looking for detritus and algae to eat. Now let's take a wider view of the Munion Island area. So site 2A is going to be in these interior channels we were looking at. And site 2B is going to be in the open flats with a couple of the mangrove islands around. Now let's also look at the water quality data that we've collected at both site 2A and 2B. Now we're going to actually start at site 2B, which is the open flats just to the east of Munion Island. And you can see these, this is footage actually from students that I've taken out to the site before. And we're pulling seine net just like we were doing at Snook Island. Now we're pulling the seines at site 2A in the interior channels of Munion Islands. And these narrow channels are really interesting because you can essentially block them up and catch everything there. And we get a lot of critters in the nets. So let's go ahead and check out some of the animals we find here at Munion Island. First up is a nine-armed star. These are awesome animals because they use their little pointy tube feet to bury into the sand. Here's a little dwarf seahorse, which is so cute, and we do find them every once in a while. Here is a barracuda. It's just a juvenile. And of course, some more checkered puffers. This is a sea robin. It's a really cool find, and you can see it has these little wings, but even more cool, it has these little walking legs coming off of its fins. Here is a blue crab. You can find lots of them along the mud flats. Here is a little juvenile snapper, which is neat to see. 
all of the juvenile fish that grew up in this area. And this is a scaled sardine. They swim in large schools, so sometimes we find them in large numbers. This is a really cool find. It's a juvenile spade fish. This is called a sole, kind of like a flounder. It's very flat with both of its eyes on top of its head. As we head back to dry land, make sure to access your data from the assignment portal to complete your work. So welcome back to the lab. I hope you enjoyed getting out in the water with us and checking out these great restoration sites here in Palm Beach County. We certainly enjoyed our time out there as well. Yeah. And of course, now it's time for you to go out and analyze the data we brought back. So until next time, keep, keep learning. learning.